Yeah. Our Ottoman will leave How much die. for a herring? Crown a piece. Huh? I'll wait for it to drop. Need to chat. I'm all ears with you. Got something for you. I love gifts, but I prefer to unwrap them in private. All right, lads, mind the barrels. Going out for a jabber with Geralt. Come. Oh, that's better. All right, what do you have for me? Max Persodi's house, as requested. Papers. Where are they? Left them in the vault. You wanted the house, you got the house. Never mentioned its contents. You're a quick study. Already as tricky as Odim himself. Keen to ridicule a man. Do you know what I and the company do with your type? Dunno. Ask for legal advice? Looks to me like you might need some. You signed the contract, old Geard. I'm just fulfilling its terms, to the letter. Unhappy? Hell, should have chosen your words more carefully. Yes, I should have. I assume you came to an agreement with Horst. Shame. A right horse in that one. Made a deal with his brother, who then beat the living shit out of Horst with a gold candle holder. <laughs> it's progress. Why did you even need those papers? To sing the Borsodis, naturally. You see, I learned of an interesting clause in old man Maximilian's will. It states that his sons must meet and shake hands in agreement at least once a year at Bellatane. Failing that, the auction house must be auctioned off. The proceeds to go to Bill Marius Hospital. Guess the old man sensed what might happen. Aim to deliver those papers to the right hands. Borsodi would have landed in the streets, and the hospital would have gotten the funds it needs to treat orphans and beggars pro bono. Awfully noble of you, showing so much concern for the needy. I couldn't give a rat's ass about the needy. Made a wither and disappear along with the city. I wanted one thing. Revenge. The Borsodis. What's your gripe? Get kicked out of an auction? Worse. They evicted me from my home. Are you really interested? Wouldn't have asked if I wasn't. Ha! <laughs> Cheeky as ever. My family. They took on some debt. A poor investment in a sawmill. A bad crop one year. A lawsuit lost. You know how it is. When it rains, it pours. We needed it but a few weeks to recover. But Horst Borsodi had acquired our debt. All of it. Demanded it be repaid immediately. I pleaded. I begged. I tore open my shirt at his threshold. Ugh. It was like talking to a wall. I went to the auction. Saw those perfumed pricks by my father's sword. My mother's death mask. My brother's horse tack. Ah, Horst earned a pretty pile selling our mementos. No surprise the animosity you feel for him. That was but the start. My Iris's parents learned of my family's misfortune. And our betrothal was no more. They found her another suitor. One from beyond the sea. The anger I felt. I thought I'd gone mad. Went to the tavern. Drank around. A second. Abroad, then had another tankard. And then, then, I asked the wrong bloke for help. Sad story. Isn't it? Truthfully, I'm surprised I retained any cheer in my soul.
Well, why do you stand there? Do you need something still? First time I've seen a saber like that. What's its origin? A fear. It was a gift. Any soft-armed craven can hang a blade from his belt, prance about feigning danger, but my saber's a promise. If I reach for it, heads will roll. Mere sight of it quells the urge to duel in shavers eager to face Olgierd von Everek, the infamous outlaw. My medallion seems to think it's magic. <laughs> it thinks, eh? And I think you've never seen a better weapon. Your band. Chosen some interesting specimens. Interesting? How so? Common carouses and roughnecks. Every last one. Where'd you dig them up? Some have been with me ages. Others are gathered on the road. And a few fell me themselves. They're company for drink and sport, at least. And ever since I've begun travelling with them, my old enemies have sat quiet as moles. I keep wondering how you turned the Ophiri into a beast. The more I think about it, the more I'm sure it was no run-of-the-mill curse. This professional curiosity, or nosiness, as common as the clap. Desire to improve. Information could prove useful down the line. In the future, you under the delusion you'll complete your tasks. Live happily ever after. Remains to be seen. So for now, admit it. A mage helped you, right? I'll give you a hint. You're not the only one to fulfill wishes round here. Oh, Dim transformed the Ophiri? It was your wish? Nay. It was my doing alone. But you're right. It was no ordinary curse. Though I'll say no more. A curse I uttered in a moment of rage. With no thought to it actually taking hold. Third wish. Time you stated it. A moment, Geralt. I will say to something. Then we'll chat. You there! Yank the herring out the barrel! Come on! None of this dallying! Ready to listen? Or do you still not give two shies about what I've got to say? I'm ready. I'm listening. Good. You'll return to your lord and tell him as follows. His demand was brazen. Hurt me to the core. For I was brought up to respect the sacred law of hospitality. And I shall not bend to an uncouth boar's dictum. Understood? I will pay him a visit shortly to test his willingness to adapt. So you ride off and announce me, and don't spare your horse. Got it? Aye, got it. Give this man a mount and leave him go. Come with you. We must talk outside. The Afiri believe one should only discuss important matters out of doors, with the gods as witnesses. that about? On the way here, we stopped for nourishment at a tavern belonging to one Lord Dauntless. We enjoyed ourselves as one does at an inn, raucously. Our antics were not to the liking of this Dauntless. <coughs> Sent a man to warn us that if we were ever to return, we would hang. You burned the inn down? I left ample compensation with the innkeep. But it seems the rapscallion neglected to mention this to his Lord. But that's of little import. What matters is someone called me a horse and threatened to kill me. It was one of those threats that sound like an invitation. I intend to accept it. Return to those parts. Fulfilled two of your wishes. Time I learned the third. 
Confident, aren't you? Proud, sure of your strengths. Fearless. Third task, if you don't mind. Mutations. They stripped you of emotion. Tell me, have you ever loved? I mean, truly loved? You don't give a shit, old Geard. You'd make piss poor company for a talk about love anyway. Third wish, still waiting to hear it. Why, aren't you stubborn? Fine. Listen well. I had a wife once. The day I saw her last, I gave her a rose. A violet one. Bring me that bloom. Wouldn't mind reminding myself what it looks like. <sighs> when was that? How long's it been? Flowers wilted and turned to dust by now. You wished to hear a wish. Now you have. Fulfill it. I ride now to visit this dauntless, but one of my men will remain here. He'll know how to find me. That is, of course, should you succeed. At least you could tell me where your wife is. In my old manor, east of Martin Foy's farmstead. I'd wish you Godspeed, but, well, you understand, I'm sure. Goodbye, Geralt. Kendrick! Kendrick! You there? Not so loud. Ah! Oh, God, scared me off to- Not so loud, I said. Fog's not natural. Could be something in there hiding. Foglets or air nymphs, for example. Don't want to attract them. Believe me. F foglets Oh, sweet mother my little why don't I ever come here? Kendrick fellow, who is he? I... we partners. Sneak into derelict houses. With something valuable lying about. Mm hmm So you're a thief? Thief steal from the living. W what's the arm taking from the dead? Kendrick went to open the door. I stood watch. Suddenly heard his lamp smash. Then nothing. Quiet. Called out to him, but... What was that? One of them foglets you spoke of? No. Phew. 
That's a stone off my... I'll see what that was and look for your partner. You... Uh, ain't about to wait around. I'm out of here. Pretty sprawling, this estate. How am I gonna find that rose in this fog? Fresh manure. Water's ice cold, mountain stream cold. Rather worn, used often. Wonder by who? A grave, here? What are you doing in a place like this? Best shoe before you get hurt. Still tending to the flower beds. No violet rose, though. Woods rotted completely. No violet rose here. Maybe somewhere out back. Busted lamp, and the grounds trampled. Somebody dragged something this way. A body? Someone dragged a wounded man through here. from cleated boots, leading from the back of the garden. I'd scooch along, kitty. This place. What's that? That. Digging. A lockpick? Must have been the other thieves.
another thief. Bodies mutilated. Who are you?
What the fuck was that? No eyes or nostrils, deformed organs. Damn thing had no right to be alive. Well, philosophers do still debate what it means to be alive, exactly. Normally I'd be shocked, but not after what I just saw. Who are you two? Clearly not animals. Think of us as friends of the house. What's with the show? The pretense that you're animals? You couldn't have warned me? No. We're obliged to maintain discretion. So why talk to me at all? Why? Well, we get so few chances to talk to humans, and we're curious to know what brought you. Gonna need a better answer than that. Later. What about this thing? What can you tell me? Friend of yours? We called him the caretaker. Doesn't look like any creature I've ever seen. Where'd it come from? From very far away. He was summoned to guard Lady Iris in the home. He tended the garden, took care of unwanted guests. Very far away? Meaning where exactly? The name of this place would mean naught to you. You know the master of the house, the owner? Olgird von Everick, yes. We know him, but he left, and his wife became mistress of the house. Great. So, Lady Von Everick home? Could you announce me, say she has a guest? Why do you wish to see her? I'm here to get the violet rose Olgird gave Iris just before he left. Iris is inside, in the bedchamber upstairs. Take his key. It opens the rear door. Guess I'll make my own introductions. So, how should I address you? As you did now. We'd rather keep our names to ourselves.
was that? This is my house. All geared as I've never known him. A different man then. Served. Caretaker must still set the table. are all alike. Every unhappy family is unhappy in its own way. Hmm. Fire damage. Interesting.
Dolores was supposed to be here. You wish to see her? Here she is. A man should frame his wishes carefully. It forestalls disappointment. This some sick joke. Why didn't you tell me she was dead right away? You didn't ask. <sighs> and why hasn't anyone buried her? We can't. As for the caretaker, the one you cut down, while still alive, she ordered him to stay away from her for all time. she die? Don't see any wounds, evidence of a fight. Her heart burst. Meaning what? A heart attack? No, it simply burst. Find that hard to believe. Yet that's precisely what happened. One day Iris locked the front door, lay down here and died. From grief, from loneliness. The deeper I get into this, the more I gotta wonder. Why are you even helping me? We were summoned to serve Iris von Everick. Our mistress died, but that did not free us from her service. Got it. You wanna leave this place, leave these bodies. <gasps> Surprised? No, not at all. Her ghost's restless, angry, attacks intruders. Know why? Lady Von Everick has endured much hardship. She's unaccustomed to guests and not fond of strange folk. She can't hear us. Seems I gotta speak to Iris's ghost. It's no easy task to contact the mistress. Rage and bitterness fill her. Got my ways. To make contact with Iris, I gotta bury her body. But that caretaker's macabre little cemetery won't do. Too much blood, too much fear. She spent much time in the front garden. Hmm, maybe there. Wait! Take this key. It opens the front door. Good dog. Ice cold, mountain stream cold. She liked to sit here, but this is not a good place for a grave. Too close to the house. I'll keep searching. Iris von Everek adored flowers. But she would never want to destroy them. Take the grave somewhere else. This place seems suitable. Yes, she loved to paint. Did Iris von Everick have any last requests? Say how she wanted her remains disposed of? She feared death. Worried none would see to her burial or say a kind word in parting. I guess I'll be the one to do that. I didn't know Iris von Everek, so I can't say much about her. Fate had it a stranger now lays her remains in the grave. At times, fate muddles our path, and life turns toilsome, hard to bear. Yet all deserve respite and peace in death. You two, 
Got any last words for your mistress? We don't partake in human rituals. Trusting that what you've done is in keeping with your customs. Your name's inscribed in this sketchbook. Perhaps you'd like it to be buried with you. The remains are interred. Let's summon her. Tormented spirit, I've laid your bones to rest. Forget your wrath, forget your grief. Show yourself. Forgive me for tearing you from your realm. I need to ask you. this place. The Painted World. The work of Iris von Everek. How'd you two get in here? We exist in both worlds at once. Strange place. One born of Iris von Everek's dreams. It existed only in her mind while she lived. In death it gained substance. Pretty fantastic tale. Hard as hell to believe. Yet you'd best believe it, and be on your guard. The painted world is rife with danger. All right, this is lovely and all, but... Where's Iris? You awoke her but for a moment. If you wish to speak to her, you must tear her from her slumber completely. Sure, but how? You're a tracker, right? Saw you examining the tracks outside. Yeah, so? This is a world built of memories blurred and wilting. Moments our mistress wishes to forget, but cannot. You need to find them, restore them, summon the fears that torment Iris, and destroy them. Easy to say. 